Son of a glitch. Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic is known for rolling around at the speed of sound, but he can also bounce pretty high too. This first glitch is called the Super Bounce, and it's an exploit of the bounce bracelet you obtain in the Pyramid Cave stage. It's performed by spin dashing at a wall, and on the approach towards the wall, press the jump button and then the action button immediately after. Sonic's acceleration from the spin dash is maintained in vertical movement, and the faster you hit the wall from the dash, the higher the bounce. The result is this incredible bounce that sends you into the air when you hit a wall, and it's useful in breaking boundaries within the game. For instance, you can super bounce back into the boarding section of City Escape to explore on foot. Just spin dash towards the wall and then perform the super bounce over the first wall and then repeat to get over the second wall. Now you can run around this part of the stage on foot collecting any items you may have missed. You can break City Escape so much using the Super Bounce, getting over all the high invisible walls, but most of the time you'll drop into the void below. But the Super Bounce can be used to great effect in other stages, like skipping the key in Pyramid Cave by Super Bouncing through a non-solid wall higher up. It's by far one of the most fun ways to get around, and you'll find yourself using it all the time once you get it down. Everyone remembers the gun truck at the end of City Escape, but here's a funny glitch you can use to show it who's boss by pushing the truck all the way back up the hill till it falls down a hole much further past its spawn point in the stage. When the truck is still in the air, perform a homing attack once, and then when it hits the ground, without moving the analog, continue performing homing attacks at a fairly frequent rate. When you reach the top of the hill, you'll no longer be able to jump, but you are able to move around freely, but keep to the far left or right to avoid hitting the boost panels. There's a buffer effect between you and the truck, so as you keep moving forward, the truck continues moving backwards. Move reasonably quickly, but don't touch the truck, as this will enable it to advance forward. Instead, back off every now and again slightly, and then carry on moving forward towards the truck. Eventually, the truck will go beyond the wall and get stuck. Ha! How do you like me now? And now you can go and explore the area, and even hang out with Big the Cat, safe in the knowledge the truck is dealt with. This next glitch allows you to enter a test area of the game that's always hidden unless you know how to gain access to it. All stages contain Chow Keys, and this one in Crazy Gadget is going to let us gain access to the test area with Sonic. First we need to hit the checkpoint directly after the Chow Key box, and then proceed with the rest of the stage. Once at the next checkpoint, don't go through, instead play through the rest of the stage as normal. You'll arrive in the Gravity Switch section, to which you need to perform a Super Bounce on this wall to get up to an area on top of the purple block. When you make it up here, you next need to charge a spin dash and then jump from this block to a platform over on the right where the goal ring is, except you're upside down and the goal ring is on the other side of the platform. What we're now going to do is jump off over the edge of the platform just slightly so as not to fall off completely, and then once back on the platform, we'll actually jump over the edge, essentially losing a life, but we'll also touch the goal ring too. You'll restart the stage back at the checkpoint with the Chow Key, and then, still totally in control of Sonic, the stage will begin to end. Before the stage ends completely, break the Chow Key box, line up with the key, then charge a spin dash and simply hold right. As the stage fades out, the spin dash will end automatically and you'll collect the Chow Key. The result of these actions is the game sending you to the test stage that you're free to explore and play around in, although there's not too much to do here of any real value. The test stage can be accessed by all the characters, for instance Knuckles can access it by using the Chow Key glitch in a different way. In Wild Canyon, find the Chow Key box and then break it, then climb the surrounding wall to arrive on the large X-shaped structure in the upper area of the stage. Facing this way, hold the L and R buttons to keep the camera facing this direction, and then simply step off the edge and hopefully you'll land on the Chow key below. Notice that the key is displayed as an actual key and not the usual Chow face. This is because when the key and the camera are a significant distance away from one another, the key is prevented from making it to the top left part of the HUD display and rendering the 2D Chow icon, instead remaining as the in-game key model. Now when Knuckles completes the stage normally, he'll be transported to the test stage much the same as Sonic was. Another example is in Mission Street as Tails, where once you break open the box and make your way to this part of the stage, the camera will lock here and you're able to pick up the key from a distance. Once again, the camera is too far away from the key, so the icon is never generated on screen and so upon completion of the stage, Tails will be sent to the test stage. It's important to note that the Knuckles and Tails version of the Chow Key glitch only work on versions that use the 16-9 aspect ratio. Okay, now for something less mind-boggling and more ridiculous. For some reason, in the HD releases of the game, Knuckles has this weird foot thing when he carries an object. That just looks painful. And what is with your legs, Knuckles? They seem to be bending backwards. 
I don't think you should be carrying things anymore, seriously. Now to make sure I wasn't imagining things, I tested this on the Dreamcast version and as you can see, Knuckles legs and feet are completely fine, no twisted ankles here, HD Knuckles be crazy. Ooh, ouch. Did you know Tails can drive backwards? Oh yeah, he's a really skilled driver. If you drift into a barrier using the jump button and then continue pressing it, Tails will spin around to face the screen while still driving backwards. The controls aren't reversed though, meaning you can carry on normally through the stage. But you have to keep your speed up, otherwise the game will correct the orientation of the car, so the faster you go, the better. Also, quickly alternating between left and right movement with the analog helps too. Any fans of Omochao out there? I thought as much. Well, if you enjoy punishing the poor guy, just blow open the doors in Eternal Engine next to the Chow Key and watch him get sucked out of the door only to respawn and do it all over again in an endless loop. Watch him go again, and again, and again, again. When will the madness end? We've covered Chow Keys and Omo Chow, but what about those adorable Chows themselves? Well, there's a glitch for these cute little guys too. In every stage you can collect animals and these glowing things called Chaos Drives. When you enter the Chow Garden, these drives and animals appear too. When you give your pet Chow either an animal or a Chaos Drive, they take them and inherit certain benefits, but once that's complete, they can no longer be used again. That is, unless you know the infinite animal usage glitch, of course. This glitch involves picking up an animal or a Chaos Drive and standing a certain distance away from your chow before offering it to them. Too close and they'll use the animal or drive as normally intended. Too far away and nothing will happen. But somewhere in the middle, they inherit the qualities from them, but the animal or drive is returned unused. The game doesn't register usage of either animal or chaos drive when offered to the chow at this distance, meaning you can use either one repeatedly to boost your chow's stats. The trick is to keep readjusting your position after each use, turning away from the chow and then back again. It's a slightly harder a rhythm to keep going with the chaos drives as they bounce away from the chow once used, but you'll get the hang of it. This is hugely beneficial for gaining emblems in races by maxing out your chow's run, swim, fly and power stats, meaning you'll breeze through all the events and easily be on your way to 180 emblems. Also, for those curious, this glitch is present in the original Sonic Adventure using the exact same method, although it's really easy to spin dash your chow in the first game. Ooh, sorry. Another chow related glitch is possible within the kindergarten black market called the infinite ring glitch, which works like so. Take a valuable item you want to sell to the black market in the kindergarten and once you've sold it, press start and then select help and options and then go into the main options. Change something like the controller vibration to off and then back to on again and you'll see the saving icon appear at the top right of the screen. Now this is saving the game file and not the chow file, which the game treats as separate and is also the reason this glitch works. Now you simply reset your console console, or in this case, I'm going to quit out of the game entirely on PS3 and then simply reopen the game. Once you're up and running again, head back to the Chow Garden via Stage Select. When you enter the Chow Garden, you'll see that everything is still as it was before you sold the item. But when you return to the Black Market, your ring total is the same as it was when you reset the game, meaning the game file which keeps track of the rings has registered the increase in rings from the sale of an item, but the Chow file, a separate save altogether, hasn't seen any change at all. And you still have your valuable item to resell to the black market. Repeat this process until you have more rings than you know what to do with. Next is an awesome out of bounds trick in Knuckles part of the cannon's core stage. When you start Knuckles section, jump out of the water and climb onto this wall. And now slowly climb down the wall and you'll see Knuckles looks as though he can clip through the floor. If you position yourself lined up like this and then move down the wall, you'll simply pop straight through the floor and end up on the other side of the wall. You can then glide through and navigate your way to this room in the void and you'll glide into to the room with the button for the door, skipping all the lasers and time switches. That's not the only glitch for Cannon's core. If you activate the objects that control the flow of time and then move away from it fast enough, the timer will stop permanently until you interact with another time object. This is useful in Sonic and Rouge's sections as they have methods of getting away from the timer quickly such as a spin dash or a drill drive in Rouge's case. The reason this glitch works is that the object that controls time only exists for a certain distance from the character, so when you leave the object off screen faster than the game expects, the flow of time is stopped infinitely. Unfortunately, this episode isn't infinite, but hey, there are some awesome glitches for you guys to try out in Sonic Adventure 2. And if you like this episode, hit that like button, share it with everyone you know and love, but most importantly, please subscribe if you want to see more from the series.